Today we're going to be showing you how to set up either a limited company or to register as a sole trader for your Amazon FBA business. So welcome back to the channel. Today we have a video all about the setup of your business when you first get started on your Amazon FBA journey. And this is something you can't get round. You will need to set up a limited company or register for self-assessment. This is a requirement for Amazon. You cannot get round this. So today we're gonna to be running you through what both of these actually mean, how they work and how do you get set up. So make sure to keep on watching. And as always hit that subscribe button for Amazon FBA videos every single Thursday. But let's get into it. So your first step when starting your Amazon FBA business is deciding your business structure. So you can either set up a limited company or you can operate as a sole trader. Now, what, which one to pick is totally down to you. And there are several factors you do need to consider when deciding. These include your level of risk tolerance, your tax situation, like whether you have a job or whether you're a higher rate payer already. And of course, the size of your business, because as I'll show you later on, running a limited company is gonna cost you more money than if you were self-employed so it may not be the right option for you. Now, if you do set up a limited company, you will need to register with company's house, appoint directors and shareholders, and you'll need to file annual accounts and tax returns. Now, as a sole trader, you'll need to register with HMRC with, with HMRC for self-assessment tax returns. But before we get into the actual setup of these, let me quickly run you through the pros and cons of a limited company and a sole trader. So up first is a limited company. And all this means basically is that your company will have a separate legal identity from yourself as the owner of the company which can have some benefits but also some negatives as well so the first big pro of a limited company is limited liability and what this means is that your personal assets are protected if anything happens in your business your personal assets are your personal assets and your business assets belong to your business so they are totally unlinked so if you do have any problems financially which of course the chances are you won't it does just give you that added level of protection and peace of mind knowing that your car your house isn't going to be affected next up is your professional image so having a limited company does make you look a lot more professional than just a sole trader a sole trader makes you just look like a one man band which isn't always the image you want to portray so when you are set up properly it can give your customers that added confidence that you are a very legitimate company and they're more likely to buy from you and the third big pro is the tax benefits. So the nice thing about having a limited company is that it can be very tax specifically if you're taking dividends out of your company because dividends do have a much lower tax rate than if you were just paying income tax. But it is important to remember that the company will still have to pay corporation tax. But overall, it is much more tax efficient to have a limited company and you can offset a lot of your costs against your business as well. The first negative of a limited company is the amount of paperwork. There is a lot of paperwork involved and way more than if you were just doing it as self-employed. So that is something to bear in mind. If you're not a fan of doing paperwork, a limited company may not be for you. The next big downside is the higher costs involved of having a limited company. Your accountancy fees are gonna be a lot higher, and it's also gonna cost you money just to set up your limited company, which you don't have to do if you are just self-employed. Now moving on to self-employed, and this is basically where you are working for yourself. You can also be self-employed and being full-time employment, but it just means you don't have a separate legal entity like you would if you had a limited company. You are your business. So the first pro is that it's a much simpler process than setting up a limited company. More or less, you can just get started. Other than having to register with HMRC, you haven't got to register a limited company. You can literally just start trading straight away. Now, the next pro is the lower cost. So obviously, we mentioned limited companies have higher costs. Being a sole trader does have much lower costs. As things like accountancy, annual filing fees, you're not going to be paying as much for. Now, the first negative of being a sole trader is that you don't have limited liability. So that means that your personal assets are part of your business. If you wasn't able to pay back your loan, for example, that would mean your personal assets can be claimed. And obviously this is a big concern for a lot of people. So you don't have that protection. And then our final con is about your professional image. So some customers may perceive you to be less professional, even though this may not be the case. That is quite a common perception if you haven't got a limited company. If you are just registered as a sole trader, you do look like a much smaller company and it's all about giving buyer confidence when selling online. Now, next up, we're gonna be running you through how to actually set up both a limited company and as a sole trader. But before we do that, we did just wanna let you know about an exclusive YouTube discount code, which will make pop up just here. It's gonna save you either 5% on yearly plans, yearly plans already have 50% off, 
or 20% on monthly plans. So make sure to take that down if you were looking to start your Amazon FBA journey. Now, first up, we're gonna talk about setting up a limited company. And there are a couple of ways you can do this. You can either do it on the government's website, which you can see on my screen just here. It's gonna cost you 12 pounds to do so. And this is what most people choose to do. However, you can also use something called a formation company. And if you just Google formation company, you'll see absolutely loads of them. We're not gonna advise you on who to pick. And this may be the option for you if you want a few more services involved. So with a formation company, you can use the formations company's address as your business address. So you can hide your home address. A lot of people don't want their home address being on company's house because any information when you set up your company is all public knowledge. So it can all be viewed on company's house. So please do that, bear that in mind. If you do want to keep more of a low profile, then a formation company may be the one for you, but it is going to cost you more money to do so but overall they're both very easy to do you just follow the steps the uk is renowned for being one of the easiest countries in the world to set up a limited company some see that as a good thing some see that as a bad thing but there isn't really that many checks or that many hurdles you have to jump through to set up your company just follow the steps and you won't have any problems now to register as a sole trader all you need to do is register for self-assessment and that is this page just here we will put these pages in the description as well for you so if you do want them make sure to head down to the description but this is really easy to do and what this means is you'll get a UTR number that means a unique taxpayer reference number and that is what you need to start selling on Amazon if you don't have a limited company you have to have a UT number without it you can't set up your Amazon seller account what will happen is you'll register on here all of your personal details and you'll get your UTR number in the post as well. And realistically, if you are setting up a limited company, you're gonna to wanna to do this as well. You're gonna be taking out money at the company and unless you're employing yourself, then you are gonna be classed as self-employed as well. And once you've registered your limited company or you've registered for self-assessment, your next step is gonna to be to set up a business bank account. And we recommend to do this just to keep your finances nice and clean. You don't really wanna be using existing accounts you have just because it can get very very messy and really confusing for your accounting. So we do recommend to set up a business bank account. It's really easy to do and there is so many to choose from. Again, we're not going to advise on who to pick in this video, but if you do a quick research, you can see some of the best ones for Amazon FBA and it's also very helpful for cash flow. When first starting your business, the chances are you will have issues with cash flow. So obviously you're gonna be buying a lot of stock. You might be spending a thousand pounds in stock, but you're not gonna get that money back for a little while. And the issue is you need to be buying more stock before you've got the money back for your other stocks. It's a constant battle with your cash flow. And this is why picking your bank is very important. A lot of them allow you overdrafts if needed or company credit cards. So this is a really important step to make sure you pick out the right one for you. Now, next up, we're gonna be talking about registering for VAT. You only need to register for VAT if you do 85,000 pounds in a year in sales. Now, there is a good chance if you are doing Amazon FBA, you will hit this. It's, it's not really that difficult in time, but this does add another element and another cost to running your business. So it is something to bear in mind, but you don't need to worry about it too much when first starting, but it's definitely something you do wanna be having in the back of your mind because it does make everything a lot more complex, especially when buying stock and selling products and so on. So they are the main parts of setting up your company. The next part is of course to set up your Amazon seller account. I won't be talking about this today because we've done loads of other videos about this before. I'll link in our full FBA course, which really follows us on from here. It talks all about Amazon FBA. We'll link it just up here. Once you've got your limited company or once you've registered as a sole trader, you can set up your Amazon seller account. You can't do this unless you have one of them. You will need to do this. We'll link that video up there and you can get started on your Amazon FBA journey. So there you have it. That is how to register as a sole trader or register a limited company for Amazon FBA. Which one is better? That is totally down to your personal choice and your personal setup. Of course, we don't know what that is. Most people, when first starting out, will just start as a sole trader for the ease and the less paperwork. Move into a limited company at a later date. But as I mentioned before, there are pros and cons of both, and you just need to have a look at your personal situation and decide which one is the best for you. But we hope you found today's video helpful. You'll find all of our links in the description for signing up, our socials, so make sure to check them out as well. We post videos every single Thursday, so make sure to hit that subscribe button for videos about Amazon FBA. But thank you for watching today's video, and we will see you in the next one.